All right, welcome back everybody. We are about to start the last part of our, uh, our conference today. And, and for this, I am extremely happy uh, to invite on the stage uh, Linda mostrup Bederson, who is the founding partner at uh, Happy42. I really love the name, Happy42. Uh, so she's going to talk about building a collaborative uh, cybersecurity skills ecosystem in the Nordic Baltic region. So Linda, happy to welcome you here on the stage. Thank you very much and a very warm welcome to all of you listening in, both here and uh, online. In the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to present you about our work with our cyber skills uh, think tank, why we did it, how it has went uh, in the last year, and what we're going to continue to work with in uh, 2025. After that, we'll jump directly into the panel discussion, where we have invited four of our uh, members from the think tank, where we'll discuss some of the essential issues that have been, been discussed a lot in our think tank. But the first question is, why did we establish a think tank? Um, from a personal note, uh, again, my name is Linda and have been a partner in a company for the last 10 years, uh, working with talent development in tech and within security for the last seven years. I live in Denmark. Uh, it's a rather small uh, cybersecurity community and a lot of the people working with, let's say, education and skilling, we know each other. And the people who are uh, really good in some very um, technical topics, their time is limited. So a lot of the times when we are talking about what are good initiatives to launch, what educational material do we need, um, how should educational programs for the future look like, instead of reinventing, uh, what do you say, the, the wheel, we might as well look across borders and be inspired of our neighbor countries. So it was a very personal um, ambition that a wish to collaborate more across borders. So, luckily for us, uh, the Nordic Council of Ministers uh, agreed on that uh, mission and decided to uh, finance a, a pilot in 2024, where we said, okay, we're going to launch this think tank with members from uh, across the Nordic and Baltic countries. Then you could say, looking into cybersecurity, and I think we discussed it a lot today with, with the previous speakers, that uh, looking into education, it's a very conservative area. Uh, taking new choices about educational programs takes a lot of time, but we don't have that time when we're dealing with cybersecurity. We have, can have very good policies on a long-term perspective, but we also need to do something today, and preferably we already did it yesterday. So we need some hands-on initiatives, and that was why our focus was, when recruiting the members for the think tank, it needed to be practitioners, people who had their uh, hands dirty and actually developed programs, tested it, met the students, met the young people, met the people actually applying these skills. So, that was the background for actually initiating the think tank. The think tank has its cornerstone in, in Aarhus, uh, based in Denmark. So it's the municipality of Aarhus who is uh, behind together with the Nordic Council of Ministers. Then are we um, the operator together with security tech space. So my ambition is that when you leave this room, you have found Cyber Bridge Forum on LinkedIn and uh, chose to uh, follow our page. So you can actually follow the recommendation that we're doing this year and also next year. But what have we done? And I think it's, it's uh, interesting for you to actually get some insights into how we have done the, the operating model. Um, we recruited 40 members uh, representing all of the Nordic and Baltic countries. Of course, we could identify good names, but we also asked our good colleagues in the countries who are the right people to invite. And we succeeded on gathering a, a quite good group. I will get to that uh, in a minute. Then we decided to say, okay, we need to establish a relationship between these members before we actually uh, get them together in person. So we had around nine uh, task force meetings in the first six months of 2024. And yes, you can do a lot online, having good meetings and discussing, but the real relationship building happens when you meet in person. So we gathered all of them in Aarhus in August. Uh, all of them traveled all the way to Aarhus, which is not the re easiest route, but we really saw that having them in person and they kind of knew each other and beforehand, then the magic happens because then we have a relationship that we can build on and the real ideas and uh, perspective um, was brought to the table. So the members, and I know some of you are sitting here today, uh, we, we are 
very proud of the group because it's a combination of both uh, from the private sector, uh, educational sector, uh, public institutions, the defense, uh, etc. And also we have youth representatives uh, below 20 years old, so we have the, the voice of the youth as well in it. So the fact that we have all these different profiles from different sectors also brings some, some new perspectives um, that we can't solve problems with the mindset that created the problem. So we need to have these diverse groups, and I think we succeeded with it. And also what is common for these 40 people is that they are really passionate about making a difference. And I think if you in the audience, if you work with cybersecurity on a daily basis, you'll probably also agree that it's probably the most um, an open-minded community where people are really willing to help each other, uh, willing to contribute, because it's a bit of a passion and paranoia, because when you know how the threat landscape is, you also know that we need to do something about it today. So that is why uh, we have 40 members who said we want to invest our time, we want to invest our knowledge if we can make a difference in terms of closing this cyber uh, security skilling gap that we have in all of the countries. But what is important here is that it's anchored under the Nordic Council of Ministers. And I actually want to stress the importance that it's anchored under them. Because the members are also saying, well, we have a lot of groups where we contribute with good ideas and perspective. But what really matters to us is that we can bring it to the table for policymakers, actually make those differences on the long term. So it makes a, a tremendous difference for us that is organized in the way it is. Um, yes. And then in terms of the strength of the think tank, that we're putting together a diverse group of people. It's no secret that it also creates challenges because it's very hard to, to kind of find the path uh, when we're having the discussions because we have different interests. We have different stakeholders that we are uh, putting our attention to. But the, at the end of the day, when we're having these discussions, we also get the broad perspectives. People having different experiences from different backgrounds. We get a mix of ideas on what is really needed in the given countries. And we get more credibility and trust in terms of what is actually being suggested. So we wouldn't change it in terms of how the group is formed because we can really see that it creates uh, a lot of value. Then, okay, I want to skip back here. We were discussing, okay, how is the landscape in the respective countries? Is it the same challenges that we're facing? And I must admit that, surprisingly enough, it is the same challenges that we're facing in all of the countries. It has been on the headline for many years now, but it didn't really change a lot. So educational programs, even though we have heard also today that uh, policymakers are prioritizing building better educational programs, it's a long, long way. Um, you're not just changing uh, curriculums on universities, gymnasiums, etc. at least not in Denmark. So that is, again, it's very important, but it's not fixing anything within this year. Um, so we need to talk together about how are we, can we be inspired by our, our neighbor countries and how they are developing curriculums. Um, as Gona told you uh, earlier in the morning, how they have built more flexible programs, uh, equipping people with skills in cybersecurity, etc. So being inspired by existing programs is quite important for us. Therefore, educational programs was a headline that we needed to address. Then diversity. I think it's no uh, surprise for any of you that we are lacking, especially females within the field of cybersecurity. I think we can visit uh, the hall next to us and count the numbers uh, in terms of how many females, and I don't think it's a 50-50 split. Unfortunately, that's also the case in all of our countries. It's hard for us to attract the girls, it's hard for us to maintain them, uh, especially in the technical domain, and again, it goes across all of the countries. So even though we can see that we have really good pilots, let's say in Estonia, I know Tina, who will come on stage later, you have been the front runner for some very good initiatives attracting more females. But pilots can't stand alone. Like we need to build sustainable initiatives and maybe even here also take programs across borders instead of again building our own small uh, silos in the given countries because it's a challenge that we need to address all of us. Then, <clears throat> we need to attract more young profiles to the field. 
So yes, for us in this room, uh, probably a lot of you is, is hyped about cybersecurity. That is why you're here. That is why you're attending this conference. But even though we have a hype about it, it's not necessarily the same reality in the schools uh, when they're choosing their uh, career path for their whole life, because we're competing with a lot of other technical domains. So I can say in, in Denmark, yes, we can feel that we're offering the best programs ever, but we are uh, competing with AI specialties, uh, coding programs, etc. So again, it's being a very niche uh, area where we need to see how can we do it even more attractive for young people to choose this field. Then all of us also uh, had the same challenge about building effective collaboration between academia and industry. Um, academia is a fantastic world of passionate people doing very, very uh, valuable research. But when we're talking about cybersecurity, we also have a threat landscape that is different today than it was yesterday. So it requires um, a lot of sync between the industry and academia if we need to develop up-to-date uh, uh, cases, curriculum, etc., equipping the students with skills that they can use when they're attending uh, their job when they're finished with the universities. Then, in the last year, uh, with all of the members that we had, we also tried to identify what have you done in the different countries that really created value. So, we developed 15 uh, best practice cases that you can read on the website as well, if you're curious, where you can see different examples on how the different countries have worked really good with programs. So, for an example, in Denmark, um, we are leading an initiative called uh, the Danish Championships, which is a really, really big competition leading up to selecting the national team, competing at the European Championships. And I think that model has inspired a lot of our neighbor countries to do the same. Because what they can see is that we have a, a channel funnel of approximately maybe 2,000 young people in Denmark competing during the whole year before we selecting the final 10. So we hope that all these cases can inspire other countries to say, should we implement something similar? And who can we contact for further information if we want to knowledge share about how they have done it? Then uh, we luckily uh, got the opportunity to get finance for 2025 for the think tank. So it uh, has been a possibility to continue with it. So it was really great news that uh, the Nordic Council ministers supported that mission. But what is important for the next year is that it must not just be a copy of this year. This year, we build trust and relationship among our members because that is the foundation for actually being able to knowledge share honestly and maybe even make collaboration across the countries that will be a, a reality in, in, um, in activities. So what we're going to do is, what we learned this year was, okay, what are the uh, common challenges and what specific work stream should we focus at in 2025? And then we will try to make a uh, more designed task force group as addressing very specific challenges. So I hope when you follow our LinkedIn page, you'll be able the next year to actually see what strategies and recommendations are our members actually developing based on the premise that we are facing the same challenges. So what we're going to have in focus and what they will be trying to address is, first of all, how can we share resources and teaching material across the universities? Because all of the members within these, uh, this area had a very clear wish that if we could, please share our materials. If it's open source, if it's allowed, it would create tremendous value if Gona in Sweden could make use of Christian's teaching material in Denmark, and so forward. So we're trying to see if we can develop a structure for this. So if anyone sitting in the room who is also from a university, educational institutions, try to be in the loop so you also can get access to this. Then we'll try to develop some recommendations for how to build and structure up-to-date uh, cyber cases for students. Because as I said earlier, the threat landscape is changing every day. So we really need to find a format and also teach the industry how do we develop the best cases that actually reflects uh, real life challenges. Then we're digging into um, incorporating cybersecurity on non-technical educations. Again, if we're looking to the health sector, well, cybersecurity is indeed important for the um, employees in this sector to know about. 
the nurses need to know about critical system and how uh, to have a healthy cyber hygiene uh, when we're talking about phishing mails, passwords, etc. So cyber security must not be isolated to the specialist alone. We need to broaden it up and get it into the non-technical uh, and also non-security educational programs. So we need to find out what is a, uh, a good way for this and can we learn from each other. Then we try to see how we can utilize the successful programs that is already being carried out for young people. So let's say the initiatives that you have in Estonia, can we roll it out in the Scandinavian countries, etc.? Can we use the knowledge that have been uh, produced uh, in each of the countries? Then we'll try to see how we can foster better partnership between industry and academia. It's a hard nut to crack for everyone. Uh, the industry is operating in one pace uh, and academia in another, and they need to find each other. And especially in cybersecurity, we have some challenges also in terms of uh, what are companies willing to disclose um, and how to build the right format for this. And then lastly, we want to establish a closer cooperation with NISA to see how can they uh, may take advantage of our input and reflections and how can we also leverage and promote all of the good publication and knowledge that NISA is producing. So if you follow our work, you will see uh, concrete action on these different topics. Then next week, we will uh, publish an end of year report where you can read a summary of our work and uh, what we have found out so far. So that was basically it. And my timer said zero, zero, zero.